Welcome to Emmanuel. It's Vacation Bible School Week, and we have had a great time sharing the message of treasured, you are priceless to God. It's a message of hope. You know, the truth is, we're not all the strongest or most handsome or most successful person in the room. Most of us are not celebrities, but we're all important. We are all significant. We all have value. God knows each and every one of us, even if the world doesn't. So today's message will help us rediscover just how much God treasures you. So welcome to worship. Today's reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? since I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me him whom I declare to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Since the beginning of time, God has revealed his will to seek and to save that which was lost. No matter how often we have entered the gates of God's place, whether often or rarely, because of sin, we are all lost on our own and helpless. Our physical appearance will not save us. Our earthly accomplishments will not save us. Our reputation in the community will not save us. For God does not look at any of these things, but only the heart. And he sees that we are sinful and unclean and deserve nothing but his wrath and punishment. Let us therefore approach God in humility to receive his forgiveness. Take a moment now to offer your humble confession to God, knowing he is faithful and just and will forgive all your sins. The good news is that God has come to you in grace and mercy and promises to change your heart from one filled with sin to a heart filled with forgiveness in the Holy Spirit. And so, upon this your confession, as a called and ordained servant of the word and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. 
According to one survey, 99% of women and 94% of men would change something about their appearance if they could. And I admit, I fall into that group as well. If there was something I could easily do about it, I would most certainly have hair on the top of my head. (laughs) And if I could, well, hey, give me three inches in height as well. (laughs) You know, if you watch the general population for very long, you'll notice that, well, I think I can say this, not many women are candidates for the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. (laughs) And not many of us men are candidates to be on the cover of uh, GQ either. (laughs) You know, Abraham Lincoln, who by no measure would be considered much of a looker, is reported to have made much the same observation. He said, the Lord prefers common-looking people. That's why he made so many of them. (laughs) Well, in today's scripture reading, following God's rejection of Saul, who was Israel's first king, Samuel is told to go to Bethlehem to anoint a new one, one of the sons of a man named Jesse. However, Jesse has eight sons, and God doesn't tell Samuel in advance which one has been selected. So Samuel goes to Bethlehem where he announces a sacrificial ceremony and he invites unsuspecting Jesse and all his sons to attend. Now once they get there, each of the sons comes before Samuel in order of age from the eldest to the youngest. So the first one is Eliab. He's tall and he's movie star handsome. So seeing this hunk, Samuel thinks to himself, surely this is the Lord's anointed. But God tells Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. As the incident proceeds, it turns out that the one God has chosen to be Israel's next king isn't even there at the time, but it's Jesse's youngest son, David, who's out herding the sheep. Now, David is described as handsome, but by the time we learn that, we also know that David's looks are not what makes him God's choice at all. God is looking at what is in David's heart. So, do you want to know one way that God is different from you and from me? Well, he's not fooled by a person's appearance. He's not misled by by beauty or, or handsomeness or any other kind of physical attribute. We are, though, aren't we? Yeah, it's true. There's been some research about how our attitudes toward and assumptions about people are often shaped by how they look. For example... These studies show that mothers of attractive babies, well, they hold and they cuddle and they kiss those babies more than mothers of unattractive babies. In one case, the researchers found a four-year-old boy who unfortunately through an accident had part of his nose, part of his cheek, and one ear bitten off in a dog attack. Now, when that happened, the child's parents began to behave differently toward him. They didn't hug or touch him as much as before, and they rarely smiled at him. 
Adults also tend to rate the more serious transgressions of attractive children as temporary departures, whereas they rate the same transgressions in unattractive children as basic character flaws. Even school teachers tend to give more attention and consideration to good-looking students and assume that they have higher intelligence. Adults tend to assume that handsome people are more interesting, more sociable, and more sincere. And good-looking female employees often earn up to 20% more than what we might call average-looking females. Now, of course, it sometimes works the other way, too, in that very beautiful people are often assumed to be unfeeling or stuck on themselves, and they sometimes have trouble being taken seriously. In C.S. Lewis's classic book, The Screwtape Letters, there's a great example of how people can be misled by appearance. Now, the book is written as if it were a series of correspondence between a master devil named Screwtape and his nephew Wormwood, who's just an apprentice devil. (laughs) So Wormwood, the apprentice, has been assigned to capture for hell the soul of a young man, but he hasn't had any success. In fact, the man has become a Christian. So Screwtape, the master devil, writes to give Wormwood some advice. In one letter, Screwtape advises how Wormwood might trip up his Christian subject by getting him to enter into a marriage with a woman who will not be good for him. And Screwtape writes, Our aim is to guide each sex away from those members of the opposite sex with whom spiritually helpful, happy, and fertile marriages are most likely, instead directing their desires to something which does exist, making the role of the eye more and more important, and at the same time, making its demands more and more impossible. In other words, his goal is to mislead humans into building an impossible vision of the other person based solely on the other's attractiveness. You see, that way the relationship is sure to have problems later when the person cannot live up to the vision. Now, aren't you glad that God sees who you are on the inside and is not fooled by outward appearances? Or are you? (laughs) You know, too often we wear a mask to hide what's on the inside. And so we put on our happy face to hide the hurting soul beneath. Or we make a show of acceptance for those we think are inferior to hide our judgmental character. In my years in Atlanta, I came to learn that a certain phrase among the genteel women of the culture was actually a put-down. At first, I was quite pleased when, concerning my ignorance of the local culture, I would hear, well, bless your soul. (laughs) It wasn't until a few years later I learned that, well, bless your soul really meant what an ignorant Yankee you are. Well, just like those Southerners, We all have any number of outward behaviors that belie our attitudes, our prejudices, even our sins that lie just beneath the surface. Jesus, too, would castigate the hypocritical scribes and Pharisees for relying on certain outward behaviors to impress others, how much they tithe, how scrupulously they observe the ceremonial laws, how righteous they look. Jesus tells them that they're straining out gnats while swallowing camels. And he adds, so you on the outside look righteous to others, but inside you're full of, well, not the word we'd use. (laughs) He says you're full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Jesus, like his heavenly father, has the ability to look at the heart. And so he sees our hypocrisy, our prejudices, our unhappiness, our sinfulness as well. But the good news is while he can see beyond our sometimes ugly or unseemly physical appearance to look within, 
He can also change our sinful, ugly, inward self to a thing of beauty. And so we can pray along with the psalmist, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. God comes to us in grace and mercy and promises to change our heart from one filled with sin to a heart filled with forgiveness and righteousness. What a beautiful thing. As followers of Jesus, then, we're not only changed on the inside from ugliness to beauty, but the same power that changed us on the inside also gives us a new way to look at other people. Of course, it's our natural tendency to be biased toward people one way or the other based on their looks. And we do typically look for outward beauty and impressive physical attributes. But as God's people, we can look past a person's physical appearance and learn a different meaning of beauty. Saying that God looked on David's heart to find him worthy to be the next king is just a way of saying that even though David was a really good-looking man, his real beauty was at the heart level. It wasn't his good looks that made him known to God, but his repentant and obedient heart. And that's why today's message brings such hope. God, the creator of the universe, knows your heart. He sees your value, not in your outward appearance or in your earthly accomplishments, but as his child bought by the price of Jesus' blood. You don't need to be a celebrity or movie star or one of the, quote, beautiful people for God to take notice of you and love you. He already knows you because he made you. And he made you exactly the way he intended. You're special, just as you are. Outward and inward flaws included. Frankly, we don't know why God made some of us better looking than others or why he made us so that we're able to prefer certain physical attributes over others. And yet it ought to raise our confidence in the moral nature of God to know that when God looks at each of us, he sees our hearts and is not misled by our appearance. For those of us who are not candidates, for the cover of GQ or a Miss America competition, that's good news. But it's also good news for those of you who are. For it's only at the heart level where an extreme makeover is really possible and where with God, real beauty counts. And in the case of that kind of makeover, we aren't expected to be able to do it ourselves. Instead, God calls us to trust him to make us new, beautiful and new. And so I pray that God would also call us to look at others the same way, not by how they look on the outside, but how they can look by God's grace on the inside. Amen. We join our voices now with all who worship God, confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh God, our Creator and Redeemer, we thank you that you do not judge as the world does, that you're not drawn to us 
because of our beauty or outward appearance. Lord, so often we're fooled or misled by beauty and physical attributes. Our attitudes about and our assumptions toward other people are often shaped by how they look. We are grateful, Lord, that you not only look at the heart, but that our hearts that were once full of lawlessness and hypocrisy have been made pure and beautiful through your forgiveness. Lord, guide us not to judge by what we see on the outside, but to have love and mercy for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings of this past week. As children and families were strengthened by your very presence in Vacation Bible School, continue to give our family strength and courage as they face a world that is so often set against you and those who follow you. Guard and protect our families from the assaults of the devil and bless their service to you in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, give your blessing and guidance to all in authority and the service of government in our land and throughout the world. Cause them to pursue righteousness and justice in all their dealings, that we may live in prosperity and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give healing and comfort, O Lord, to all who are in trouble, danger, or illness, especially Ray Boyer, Skylar Cochran, Bruce Engerbrecht, Mike Hardy, Mary Harvey, Bob Kramer, Art Lutheris, Amy Morgan, Jeff Shakatano, and those we now name in our hearts. Sustain their courage and faith in your mighty care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also give you thanks and praise, O Lord, for long life, health, and all the blessed relationships that Nancy Giesecke enjoys as she celebrates her 90th birthday this month. Lord, you are so gracious and merciful and provide so many undeserved blessings. And so to you goes all worship, honor, and glory. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We know that you hear us, and in your grace, hear and answer according to your will for us. We are now bold to pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are so treasured by the Lord that he has provided a special meal for us so that our relationship with him might be encouraged and strengthened and, of course, our sins forgiven, that we would receive the promise of new life and salvation. Take a moment now to prepare your elements for the Lord's Supper. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The body of Christ given for you. In the same way also we took the cup, after supper, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you.
And now the body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Depart in peace. David ranked so low in his family that his father didn't even invite him to the party with Samuel. Instead, he tended the sheep, the job of a servant. And yet, God knew David's heart, and he knew that David would be a truly great servant king. God knows us as well and loves and treasures us for who we are. That's the good news that Emmanuel has called and committed to sharing. Your gifts and offerings to the church help us continue to do that through our ministry to our community. Now, there are several ways that you can give your offering to the church, and we're thankful for anything that you are able to joyfully give. Learn more by going to give.emmanuelcl.org. We're also grateful if you would fill out a connection card. Just capture the QR code below or visit connect dot org to sign in let us know that you are here we are so glad you were with us to worship today please share this service with others so that they too might hear the good news they are treasured and priceless to god and now the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you the lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. I am a priceless treasure. God knows me, God hears me, God is my comfort. I am His and there's nothing better, forgiven and chosen forever. Oh,
always makes a way. I am His and He is mine, and I am the prize He came to find. I am a priceless treasure. God knows me. God hears me. God is my comfort. I am His and there's nothing better. Forget.